Hello my friends, we are back in Luminar Neo and today we are taking a closer look at Mask AI. Mask AI came in the new release from today. This is version 1.06. So if you did not update your Luminar Neo, go ahead and do it because we have a few new things and Mask AI, it's one of them. The cool thing about Mask AI is that um, it detects up to nine separate elements in the photos. It detects people, skies, architecture, transportation, water, flora, mountains, natural ground, and artificial ground. Of course, in an image like this where we do not have people, it will not detect people or any other stuff that is not in the image. To find Mask AI, you will have to go and edit. And Mask AI is attached to every single tool. So if you go and develop, masking will be next to the adjustments. And as you go down the list of tools, you will see masking. It's attached to every single one of them and you can use it. You can also use masking into the layer overlays and we'll go into that in a second. But for now, let's see how we use it. Now we'll start to develop and I will go into masking. When you click on masking, you are greeted with this overlay. Um, let me just go and clear this. And now if we want to use brush for masking, we can just basically brush somewhere and we brush our masking. Simple. We had brush before, but I'm going to reset this and move on to the next masking techniques. The next one we have, I don't know why this one keeps happening. Next one we have, it's linear gradient. And if you've ever used the linear gradient in Lightroom or Photoshop, well, they work just like that. You drag it from whichever side you want. And there you go, we have a linear gradient. Very, very useful tool, especially when you want to adjust skies or darken sides of the image. Another mask that we have, it's my favorite, and that is the radial gradient. When I click a radial gradient, you can just drag from the center and build a mask. The mask is forming from the center, so when you go from the center to this first line, the adjustment, it's not affecting the image. And then from this line to the outer line, you're getting the feathering when it slowly inches into the adjustment. And by the outer line, you are at 100% adjustment and it stays 100% until the outside of the picture. All right, I am going to reset this as well. Next on the list, we have AI mask. And when you click on AI mask, we are greeted with these uh, buttons. This is what the program detected in the image. So it detected sky, flora, architecture, mountains, natural grounds, and man-made grounds. So let's see how good it did. Once you click on it, it will show an overlay of the sky. And you can see it's not the perfect selection, but we can fix that and I will show you how in a second. Now we have the sky selected. If I click again on the sky, it will deselect it. Let's click on flora. For flora, I detected some trees and bushes over here. Again, not a perfect selection. I will click again to deselect it. I will go to architecture and this time it selected the barn. Again, not a perfect selection. Click again to deselect it. Mountains, we do not have mountains. I don't know what it thinks is mountains. I think it's just like far away trees in the distance. Then we have natural grounds, which would be the grass. And it got most of it, not all of it. And then main man-made man grounds, which would be the road. And that it found. Now let's see how do we use it. So let's say we want to brighten the barn. How do we go about it? Well, I will go to adjustments and then I'll increase the exposure a little bit, maybe a little bit of whites and maybe down the blacks. But that brightened the whole image. And now we can go to masking and we know the mask AI found architecture as the barn. So I am going to click on that. The selection is not perfect, but we can adjust it. That's the cool thing about selections. You go back and you choose your brush. And now we want to erase some of this selection. I'll make my brush smaller and I can go around and erase some of the selection. And you can take your time and just slowly go around the edges. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger and just kind of with the feathering of the brush, go alongside of the barn. And it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough. Something like that. I don't know what's happening in here where I selected, so I'm going to deselect those trees. 
and maybe even go around this because it's a very harsh selection here. I just want to soften it. I'm going to make my brush bigger. And you see I'm going with the edge of my brush just to soften a little bit the edges. I do not need a perfect selection for this. But I do want it to have softer edges. And now when I go to the adjustment, there you go. This is my bright, my bright barn. If you see, this is the before and after. Before and after. Let's take a different example and try something different. This time I will choose this image. And I want to maybe make this boat stand out a little bit. I can go to color and then I can mask the boat. So let's see, if I go to mask and I go to AI mask, will it find the boat? It's doing its little thing and I'm assuming it's probably under transport. Yes. And again, we do not have a perfect selection, but we can go back to brush and we can erase the extra selection that has been made. Try to get it as close as possible. You should probably take your time and just make a good selection. I'm just doing a quick one. Something like that will do. And now that I have my masking, I can go into adjustments. I can go into the saturation. Increase maybe the reds a little bit and the oranges. And that looks good to me. Now here is a trick. We can go back to our masking. Let's say I want to make the boat lighter, brighter, so it stands out. I can go to masking and I already have my mask. And now I can go and copy this mask. You see, you can do a fill, clear, invert, show, paste, and copy. Fill will just fill your whole image with the mask. Clear will clear your whole image from the mask. Invert will invert the mask. Copy will copy it. Paste will copy it. Will paste it and show it will show the mask. So I will co copy it. I will get out of this color adjustment and I will go to develop. And here I want to brighten maybe the. There you go. I'll brighten the image. But then I'll go to masking and mask action. I will paste my action and now it only brightens the boat. You see, it shows my mask and there you go. And now I can go to adjustments and further refine my adjustment. I can brighten it as much as I please. And that's the way we copy a mask and paste it into a different adjustment. So you can take your time and really do a nice adjustment and then you can just copy that one and your mask and copy it on all the other adjustments. Now let's say I want to put a little bit of saturation onto this scene over here. Well, I can go to develop and this time I will just increase maybe the saturation a little bit. And now I can go to masking and just use a radial gradient. And there you go. But you see the adjustment, it's uh, applying to the outside of my gradient. So I have to invert it. So I have this handy button over here. Just click invert. And now we are applying the adjustment to that little scene. This is our before and after. Before and after. The, full, the whole image, here is our before and after. Before and after. Let's do one more example. And this time I will show you a different reason for using masking. And that is to blur the background. I have this horse picture over here. And I will start to structure I will take it to negative 100 and then I can use the masking and use a radial gradient to protect my horse from being blurry. Something like that will do just great. So let's see, this is our before and after, before and after. Look at the brick over here on the wall. Before and after, before and after. Let's go down the line here. Now I can maybe add some details. And I'll reduce the details, small, medium, and large, and this gets our image very blurry. But now you guessed it, we can use my favorite radial gradient and we can protect the horse. There you go. Now we did that. And this is our image so far before and after, before and after. We can maybe add a little bit of vignette. So we're darkening the image. We'll go to masking. You guessed it, radial gradient will protect our horse. Maybe we can even alter the 
gradient make it a little bit more oval to fit the horse head shape and we'll elongate it this way and there you go that looks good to me and this is the before and after now we can also get rid of this corner by cropping the image a little bit so i will just drag in that corner something like that and i will accept the change and this is our image before and after maybe we want to brighten the horse a little bit we'll go to develop this time we'll use a brightening adjustment layer and we'll just use masking and we'll just brush it over the horse and this will just bring more attention to the horse i'm sure i probably made it too bright let's go back to the adjustment take it down just a little bit and this is the before and after we brighten the horse this is the image before and after you can also use masking like i say i said onto the with your overlays i will just apply an overlay let's see i have just this brown overlay i had it from a different image i will increase it to a hundred percent as you can see and then let's just maybe go with soft light and that creates more color and contrast and if we want we can of course use a radial gradient and erase it from our horse something like that and there you go now this is our image color graded this is the before and after before and after we color graded with the overlay and uh, we blurred the background a lot and this is how to use mask ai and luminar neo thank you so much for watching my name is kyler ewing i will see you in my next video